Here's the problem. Life is crazy busy. You are juggling tons of things all the time. And time is what you don't feel you have enough of. But time and time again, you fail to get all the important things done in a timely manner. But you're not a quitter. So the story you tell yourself is, I'm going to get everything done this time. But at the end of the day, you simply run out of time. I know that not having enough time seems to be the problem, but in all actuality, it's the solution. Everyone has the same amount of time every day. However, in a typical day, most humans won't be able to do all the things all the time. You have to make a choice on what to do and when to do it. Tim Ferriss says it this way, if you don't feel like you have time, you don't have priorities. Prioritizing what you do first is a huge step in the right direction, but it's not the only step. What's just as important is when you do it and for how long. The best tool to help us figure this out is one that you have on your phone right now, the humble calendar. But here's the crazy thing. We all have calendars, but many of us either don't use them or don't use them to their full potential. Why? It all comes down to what type of planner you are. Dan Chanis in his amazing book, Everything in Its Place, describes three types of planners we can be. The first is the under planner. When it comes to calendars, under planners rarely look at their calendars. And why would they? There's nothing on them. Under planners are vulnerable to chaos. They surrender to time. The second type of planner is the over planner. Over planners try to do all the things all the time, every day. Unlike under planners, they actually use their calendars. Unfortunately, if you were to look at them, their schedule would look like a bird's eye view of downtown traffic during rush hour. And these bumper to bumper schedules are just their meetings. They don't take into consideration all the tasks they have to do because those are on another list somewhere completely separate from their calendar. Because of that, over planners actually create the chaos. They fight time. Now, do you resonate with either one of these planners? If so, let me know in the comments and share your own story if you feel comfortable doing so. Fortunately, there is a third option Dan Chanis mentions in his book and the one I coach creators to embrace, the honest planner. Honest planners plan their tasks and meetings alongside each other. They determine their daily tasks ahead of time and assign a length of time to each. Honest planners prepare for chaos. They work with time. The only thing I have found that empowers me to be honest with time is using a tool that allows me to schedule my events and my tasks in the same view. I call this tool a Digital Action Scheduler, or a DAS. A DAS has a unified calendar that allows you to schedule your actions, which I define as an event to attend or a task to complete in one unified interface that has a day view representing a 24 hour period of time. That view is crucial. Allow me to show you an example using one of the schedulers I recommend. It's called Morgan. At the time of this recording, Morgan offers a free forever version. So if you wanna check it out, I'll provide a link below. But since this video is focused on the overall benefits of a DAS, I won't dive into all the specific features of Morgan, but if you'd like me to do an in-depth overview of this app, just let me know in the comments. Deal? All right, here we go. Okay, so when you first open up Morgan, you're gonna see this gorgeous, well-designed app. If uh, the Morgan team is watching this video, Great job, y'all. This is a very well-designed app. Um, I'm currently rocking the dark mode, which in my opinion is the only mode to be rocking. Um, and you'll also notice there are gonna be three main panels. Right now you only see two, but 
one is about ready to magically show up. So in this first panel, this is what I've been calling the navigation panel. This is where you click on uh, different options you have here in the left-hand side. But the one we're focusing on for this video is the tasks. When I click that, that pops open. And that's nice because if you want to toggle this off, once you get your tasks organized, you can move that out of your way if you need some more screen real estate. But right here is where you have your tasks. And the way Morgan does it, they start you off with an inbox. They call this a, a, a task list or a folder, but you can twirl this open and close just to get stuff out of your way. Uh, what's nice is you can make more lists. So if you want to focus on either an area of life, like prof professional or personal, or maybe you want to focus on a project, you can you can make as many as you want. I've actually created several. I'm hiding them right now. But if you go over to the uh, triple dots here, you'll see I've hidden all of these. If I click show all, then they all of a sudden they show up right here. And I like to organize my stuff into three main uh, categories. There is the purple for my personal development. My uh, blue is personal roles and the orange is my professional roles. And you probably notice several of these have numbers next to them. And yep, you guessed it. If I have assigned a task to a certain area, then that tells me that I have two tasks in that particular list. And what's nice, if you're doing things according to like what I'm doing with your life roles, I can see here, oh, I've got no tasks in my, my friend role. I'm a jerk right now. I'm not thinking about my friends at all. So that gives me an instant notification that, hey, I probably need to be intentional about doing stuff with my friends. <laughs> but we're just going to focus on the inbox right now. So I'm going to click the triple dots here and I'm going to hide all of those and open up the inbox and this is the basic functionality of the the tasks panel and then the final panel of course is the calendar now this calendar is straight from my google calendar this isn't a sandboxed calendar that's just morgan this is what makes morgan so powerful these are calendars that you are currently using right now and one of the killer features actually with morgan is the fact that they connect with pretty much all the big calendar servers out there. That's a big deal because if you get one of these digital action schedulers and you get excited about it, you download it and you realize, oh, they only work with Google and that's it. Well, then it's pointless to work with it because if you're working with Google for your home calendar, but you're working with Office 365 at work and you still can't merge all of your stuff and that's the point. So check that out. Google, Office 365, Outlook or Exchange, Fastmail, iCloud. Uh, just that alone is a massive deal. So that's why I, I usually will promote Morgan right off the bat from anyone who is not using one of these, these unified calendars. Now, just one side note, if you need to connect two or more like you have google and you also need to click connect icloud or outlook two or more you need to have the pro account um, so just just uh, be aware of that um, and on the calendar side of things uh, they've got some great keyboard shortcuts you can find them up in here and if you're familiar with how google does their keyboard shortcuts and i think other apps are starting to follow suit with this it's real easy to go from day view, uh, tap W for week, M for month, A for agenda, and then I'm on the Mac, so command two for two days, command three, command four, and then D for day. Okay, so let's go back over to the tasks. We're gonna open up our inbox, and you're gonna see some of the tasks that I've made right here. And the reason why I will only recommend these action schedulers, unifying tasks and events in today's age is because this type of tool is what will get us time honesty. For us to be an honest planner is going to force us to recognize the fact that what's the one main common denominator that our events have and our tasks have? Time. They both take time. Whether it's a task, it takes time to do them, 
or an event, and it takes time to attend them. That's what we have to take into consideration. Um, lists are great to start out with, but that's not where we should end up. If you just have a task list, one thing you're not gonna be able to do is really to see easily how long it's gonna take us to do all this. I read this great quote by Peter Bregman. He said, a to-do list is useful as a collection tool. Our calendars, on the other hand, make the perfect tool to guide our daily accomplishments because our calendars are finite. There are only a certain number of hours in a day. And that's why we do this with our tasks. It's forcing us to be honest. So this is how we would do it. We go over to one of our tasks and what you might not see in other task lists, apps, when you click on this, it's gonna ask me, okay, what do you think the estimated duration of this task is gonna be? Estimation, of course, is the key word. There's no way we're gonna know for sure, but we're giving an educated guess. We have to take that into consideration. So I've already put these numbers in here to show you something that's really cool with how Morgan works. Um, you can drag these out just like how you would a calendar event, but when I put 30 minutes in here for Call My Wife Sandy, I'm gonna drag this in and you see it's automatically going to have the 30 minute range. So I drag and drop it and there it is in my calendar. Uh, mow the lawn, I'm gonna drag it and I told it it's about an hour. So you see it's already, it's, it's uh, twice as long as that one because I told it it's gonna be an hour long. I'm gonna do this uh, right here. Um, edit a YouTube video like the one you're watching now. That typically takes me at least on the first pass a couple of hours. I'm going to drag that here and then write YouTube script. Oh yeah, that takes me like most of the, the mornings to get that down. So I'm gonna drag that and put it right about here. And then you see, uh-oh, what looked like, oh, I've only got, you know, a handful of tasks to do when I just look at it as a list. When I look at it in a 24 hour timeline, my day is filling up real fast. And typically, you know how it is. Oh, it's gonna take me three hours to, to uh, write a YouTube script. It's probably gonna take more. Usually it's longer than what you think. So I'm gonna have to make some assessments here and say, you know what? Uh, let me just go ahead and drag this down here to after lunch. You know what? No, let me call her during lunch because I can do an event at a task at the same time. That's another benefit of looking at your tasks and events at the same time here. Another cool feature, I've been using their priority option a little differently than what most people will use it. Most people will say, hey, write a YouTube script. Oh, so I have clicked on this and I made it a high priority. What I do, since priority to me is if I'm doing it today, it's a priority. So that's kind of a, it's moot. I don't need to, to say if this is priority or not. If it's in my timeline, it's priority. What's more important to me is what time of the day I am doing this. And so I am using high, medium, and low, not as priorities, but as energy levels, specifically cognitive energy. It's based off the book, When by Pink. And this has been a game changer for me. I discovered since I am an early bird, my circadian rhythms typically, I peak from eight o'clock in the morning to 11, 12 o'clock. And then I start to, to go down during the, the day. So to me, this tells me, okay, writing a YouTube script, writing a script from scratch, that is going to demand the most mental energy from me that I could possibly ask. So that's why I put it earlier in this day right here. But to edit a video, that doesn't take as much. I gave that a two, so I can do that three and four. And if you notice, mow the lawn, I'm just brain dead. I don't even have to think about that. So I put it down here. So that's another great way to see your tasks when you're thinking about your energy levels or your rhythms of the day. Um, and the third thing I wanted you to see, um, just like what I did with Sandy here, I realized, okay, there's a difference between an event and a task. What science is discovering is humans, we're not really good at multitasking. 
So if I had a task on here to, let's, uh, I've got it right here. So listen to podcast. Here's what I can't do. I'm gonna listen to the podcast at noon and I'm gonna call my wife at the same time. No, <laughs> no. Husbands, don't do that. Get, you give her your undivided attention. But an event with a task I can do. So I can call my wife while I am eating a hamburger. <laughs> and I can also listen to a podcast while I'm walking the dogs. See, that's the difference. So I have started to rethink. I used to have walk the dogs as a task, but now I changed it to an event because, you know, technically I'm, I'm, I'm at a certain place with certain people. I am at the park with my dogs, but I can also listen to a podcast at the same time. And what's great is some people, if they don't do this, they'll say, man, when do I have time to, to grow or to learn? You can see this very easily when you use a unified calendar like this to time block your tasks and schedule your events. And the third thing that I find, this really helps combat action bias. Because if you look over your task, and I just, I made this up, but confirm Guardians of the Galaxy 4 with Chris Pratt. <laughs> um, let's say, hey dude, that is really important. I gotta do this today, immediately, like right now. I don't care what time it is. But then I look on my calendar and I realize, oh, well, wait a minute. I have a meeting with Marvel today at one, and I know Chris is gonna be there. Well, instead of just calling him early in the morning when he's probably not even awake and stressing out about it, well, I'll just put it right here. So when I'm at the meeting, I know this task will notify me, hey, remember, you were gonna ask Chris to about the Guardians of the Galaxy. So that's another thing that helps me with pushing back against that action bias, which I, I say action bias is see problem now, solve problem now, just do it. But using this calendar plus tasks tells me, oh, I'm gonna do it. I'm not being lazy, I'm, but I'm being thoughtful and I'm being intentional of when I'm going to do it. And to me, this is the best time to do this task. So hopefully you can see that scheduling both your events and your tasks side by side empowers you to be a much more honest planner. Now, obviously we can't predict the future of how long our actions are gonna take. We will need to adjust our plans regularly. Like Dwight D. Eisenhower says, plans are useless, but planning is everything. What I have discovered through this habit is that I become way more intentional with my actions. I feel more accomplished at the end of the day, and when I review my past week, I actually have more accurate data to use when I plan my future. To me, this is a virtuous cycle. It empowers me to live a healthy, sustainable life, and that is exactly why I wanted to share this with you. If this video has helped you, I hope you give it a like, and when I've earned your trust, subscribe to the channel. And if you know another creator who would resonate with this topic, go ahead and share this video with them. And hopefully, one day, with our combined efforts, we will see.